Thank you very much, Lisa. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tom Ferris. I'm with Alliance Communications. Uh, coming into the broadcast today from our U.S. headquarters in sunny Wayne, New Jersey, just outside of New York City. Nice day here in New York City. It's 85 and not humid. So I got to thank everybody for coming on uh, our webinar today on such a beautiful day. I hope it's really nice where you are as well. So let's get started. I'm going to give you a little bit of introduction about Alliance and Redline, and then I'm going to turn it over to our friend Duval Yeager. Uh, you've all been on some of these before in the past. You've probably heard Duval's voice. He's been in the industry for as long as I can remember, and uh, he's one of the top thinkers in the wireless industry these days. So we're really glad to have him on board here today. Um, throughout the conversation today, feel free to enter any chat questions you might have, and we will answer them in real time. Okay. So what's exciting about today's presentation? Well, Redline is a long-standing partner of Alliance. We've been doing business together as a distributor uh, for them for probably close to 15 plus years, almost the complete duration of Redline's existence. Um, they've been an innovator from the beginning. Um, they started off in this business way back when making one of the first high capacity five gig radios and it's just gone, uh, it's just gone gangbusters from there. Um, what we're going to talk today is, um, is Redline's uh, latest and greatest product set and roadmap. You'll see a variety of radios in a multitude of different types of frequencies that all offer the same high quality, high capacity, industrially rated type of product and performance. All right? And this is a product based on its pricing and product selection. It fits in a variety of different vertical markets. This is just not a, an oil and gas or a utility product. We put these products in all different types of applications, highway projects, security surveillance projects, education, all the different vertical markets out there. So I'm glad for you all to come on board today. Hopefully you'll take, uh, get some good takeaways from this, and uh, we can hopefully work with you in the future. A little bit about Alliance. We are a wireless and wireline value-added distributor. We are based throughout the Americas, in Canada, the United States, and Mexico, and we have several warehouse facilities in each one of these territories. We provide a variety of different products from uh, active and passive RF products to infrastructure products, basically anything you need to hang equipment on a tower or on a roof. We also supply IDAS and ODAS equipment, and we're a manufacturer of fiber optic, and we also re fiber optic uh, products, finished products, and we do resell bulk fiber products as well. And then lastly, we're a supply chain specialist. We do a lot of work for the cellular providers in the U.S., providing inbound and outbound logistics for their regional builds across the U.S. and Canada. As I said earlier, we're one of the leading suppliers of infrastructure solutions in the Americas. We've got a world-class product assortment, Redline included. Uh, we have extensive inventories in each one of our buildings. We have personalized expert assistance from industry veterans. We are not a bunch of box pushers here at Alliance. We, uh, we hire experienced people who've been in the industry quite a while who can do anything from uh, design to, ask, to answer technical questions about any type of product we, we uh, we sell. Um, so when you call us, we have answers for you. We don't usually have to get back to you. And we also make independent recommendations. You'll see we have a little bit of overlap in our product lines, so we can fit the right product to what you're trying to do. We also provide pre- and post-sales technical support. Um, we can actually help design networks for you uh, before they get built. We can make design recommendations and assist you with complete bill of materials. And we can also send our uh, engineering staff out on site to do customer sanctioned training as well. And as I said earlier, we've got warehouses throughout the Americas. In terms of technical services, we offer microwave path licensing in both Canada, with Industry Canada, and in the US with the, with the FCC. So we can take care of all your microwave path planning as well as licensing requirements. We also do network design, so if you provide us with some information about what you're trying to accomplish, your locations, we can actually design these networks for you. We do all radio path surveys and software. We also do radio and product pre-configuration, so before any equipment goes out to your location, we can have it pre-configured with the latest firmware and any types of settings you might need for those radios. 
And we also do kitting, uh, racking and stacking of cabinets and uh, you know any type of outdoor equipment. Um, we also sell a variety of different tower manufacturers' products, including Trilon, Staber, and Valmont. So you'll see that we can also provide you with complete tower design uh, prior to actually building your bill of materials. And we do provide tier one and two technical support and RMA support for several of our manufacturers. Just to give you a little bit of taste of our best in class broadband solutions, we pretty much cover the gamut. Anything you might require in outdoor as well as indoor uh, broadband wireless from backhaul and transportate point to point uh, and multi-point backhaul systems, licensed and unlicensed frequencies, mesh products, outdoor and indoor Wi-Fi. I kept WiMAX up there for old time's sake, but uh, we have some new, I guess we call it, we, we have different names for products these days other than WiMAX, but it's a pretty recognizable name. We also supply towers and all different types of AC, DC, UPS, and renewable energy type solutions. As you see here, some of these are uh, pretty much, you know, if you're in the business, these are uh, well-known household names, and these are some of the best folks in the business. And that's about it for my end. I'm going to be monitoring the call today. If there's any other questions you might have regarding Alliance, we can take them throughout here and answer them at the end of the session. Uh, stay tuned for future Alliance-sponsored webinars. We may be a little quiet in August just because of, uh, of vacations, but you'll um, see us turning, back, sort of turning things back on in September. Or as Lisa mentioned earlier, you can listen to any of our presentations up on our YouTube channel. And now I'll turn it over to Duval Yeager. It's all yours, Duval. Good afternoon. Can you hear me well? Very well, yes. Very good. So um, I wanted to make this webinar as quickly as possible, and it's a, it's a very, very long topic. So I will go through um, some of our, our corporate slides rather quickly. For those of you that are not familiar with Redline, we are a Canadian company based in Toronto, Canada, or Toronto, so they say in Canada. Um, we have about 120 employees in 16 countries. We are a public company, so it's very easy to follow our uh, progress. We have projects in about 70 countries, over 150,000 radios installed, 43 patents to our technology. And our main markets are the energy, government, and telecom sectors. Redline, with the addition uh, a couple of years ago of our LTE solution, we now can provide a complete end-to-end -end solution for a telecom service provider. From our core network, our EPC, to our famous virtual fiber backhaul products, which are transport radios, to our mobile LTE solutions and even user devices, um, both uh, Redline's uh, user devices and third-party user devices that interoperate with our LTE system, we can now offer end-to-end uh, -end system uh, for a telecom service provider. So here's an interesting slide on um, really what service providers need to need to do nowadays to be competitive and to service all of the markets. A lot of people call this the smart city, but it, it's really any application that you would need to support in any type of a, a city environment. And this would likely start with a last mile product. Your last mile might be Wi-Fi, it might be 3G, but more than likely it's going to be LTE. You might be focused just on devices, uh, but you might also be focused on first responders or automated metering infrastructure or intelligent transportation systems or the Internet of Things or machine to machine. All of these things are last mile applications that will connect to an LTE or other type of last mile uh, networking. Redline also has our virtual fiber product and the purpose of virtual fiber is transport or backhaul. So it is a point multi-point system and this product would obviously backhaul your uh, LTE enode bees uh, which Redline ma uh, manufactures. Uh, obviously we could also back all other manufacturers eNode bees. But the other thing that's very interesting about our virtual fiber solution is it solves a big carrier problem which is offloading a very intensive application such as high resolution video, analytics at the edge, computing at the edge, and of course business to business are enterprise customers that need high bandwidth. 
more than LTE could provide them with. And then, of course, we have our core network, which is called FlexCore, our EPC, which can be the control for all of these systems. And the important thing is uh, to know is that uh, most of our telecom service providers, providers mix and match. They don't buy a complete system. We integrate either with someone else's core or someone else's LTE. Um, so all of our products are open standard so that they can integrate. So what we're going to talk about today is the business to business portion of this map where we're going to be offering high-end customers customers that would normally want fiber, customers that might even be interested in microwave, we're going to offer a point to multi-point system to give them uh, the dedicated internet service that they're looking for. In Redline, we call this business access or big business access services. So it's a small fixed antenna that's located on the roof or, or, or wall of the uh, company or enterprise and it gives them uh, data services, dedicated data services. Um, so this would be like a leased fiber replacement. This is an extremely high average revenue per user. In fact, it's probably the highest ARPU that a service provider will have. It's extremely demanding. These clients want the network to be up with four nines, um, in some cases more, of availability. But the interesting thing about this, it is absolutely the industry's fastest return on investment. Um, they're also very stable customers. They will stay if they like your service, they'll stay and they'll stay and they'll stay. So you don't have the same churns that you have with other segments um, within telecom. And this is really a red line specialty. We've been doing this for a long time. Customers have taken our products and, and gone wild with this segment. And this is the first year, 2016 is the first year where we have made some serious changes to this product to better focus on this market. And I know a lot of you have heard about our new pricing structure and obviously that was part of it. But there's also a lot of technical things that we did to the product to make it a better fit and solve a lot of the challenges that a lot of our service provider customers they were ha telling us they were having. So for those of you that are taking notes or doing screenshots, you don't need to. Uh, we'll be sending this uh, presentation following, um, following this webinar. So um, relax and listen and let us know if you have any questions. But our benefits here are lower capex. It's going to cost you less money to roll out this system than any other system you would have. And I know there are a lot less expensive systems out there, but if you stick with me for, th for the next 20 to 25 minutes, you'll see why. We cover more miles, square miles or square, square kilometers for each dollar spent than any other system. We deliver more bandwidth per square mile than any other system out there and we have the quickest and simplest CPE. And you'll see some pictures of me doing installs um, to learn this. Um, so we, we really know that we have the quickest CPE to install. As far as our operating expenses, which can be very big in this, in this particular segment, because the customers are extremely picky, um, our radio is the less expensive to support. This is because it has extremely high system availability. So that doesn't mean that it it just doesn't fail. It's much more than that. How does it work in the face of interference? Can I offer this customer a stable 50 megabits per second without interference, without jitter, without problems in unlicensed spectrum? And that's going to give you a lower operational cost if you can do that. It needs to be stable, scalable, and um, all, all of our software and hardware is in-house so we can control this. And finally, it's just a better service to your business subscriber. Your subscribers are going to be happy with a stable performance. We have synchronous uplink and downlink. We're the only manufacturer that, that can truly offer that. And many service options, and you'll see that. So um, what we focus on, and you'll see the business case towards the end of the presentation, we, we have a lower cost per gross ad, which your telecom service providers will be very keen to, to talk to you about their CPGA. We have the lowest long-term operational expenditure and much better service flexibility. So let's make clear, for any not super clear about this particular application, what we're doing. We're going into a business and we're getting their data network, all their PCs and their voice network, and we're throwing them both into a, a router, and then we're connecting that router to our Redline Enterprise radio, and then that radio is going to 
contact back to a base station, which could be located anything from five to eight miles away. So there are two segments that we have for this, but I will tell you since I think everyone on this call is from North America, in North America we only have the small to medium enterprise because the small office, home office segment is a very low ARPU, a very low uh, revenue per month uh, per user. Um, so as far as small to medium enterprises, we're looking at 10 to 100 PCs or workstations uh, in a business someone that needs somewhere between 5 to 50 megabits per second, and they're looking for dedicated access. They're not looking for a shared medium where there could be oversubscription or not absolute pinnacle service. Um, they're looking, obviously, for advanced services like SIP trunking, uh, virtual desktop, and this kind of thing. They are price elastic, so they'll pay a little bit more, but they're extremely service-centric. And normally, a service provider would catch these customers with fiber or point-to-point -point microwave. So the whole business proper is, proposition here is not use this radio instead of a, an, another point multipoint. Redline's proposition is those customers that you would normally put fiber to or you would normally put point-to-point -point microwave to, put them here. So just, um, just to be really crystal clear at what we're talking about, we're talking about the purple circle. Up at the top left-hand corner, we have, so these, these two charts here, the yellow chart is an oversubscribed or a best effort service. Uh, and down here at the bottom you chart, you see best effort at 3 megabits and 6 megabits and 10 megabits per second, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to 100 megabits. The purple line is dedicated, so this would be uh, a service that's not a shared service. I would have my 3 megabits or 5 or 10 or 20 or 50 or 150 megabits. So we're looking at the purple service, which is unshared un, un, uh, service. And our sweet spot are the small to medium enterprises, which is the low end of this. And these are customers that are probably paying anywhere between $400 and $1,200 per month in service fees as enterprise or small corporations. And as I said, they expect a very, very good service for that price point. So what would you normally do? You'd put microwave, and this is an actual photo of an actual microwave tower <laughs> in Brazil. And you can see what this service provider has done to uh, go after this market, and it looks like a little Christmas tree. And more and more you see more of this. Um, microwave is not expensive to buy. You can buy some microwave solutions for below $2,000 a link. So it's not just the cost of the microwave. A customer that's paying you $1,000 a month, you can certainly afford to put microwave in. The problem is what you're seeing here, offering a reliable service when you've got a Christmas tree like this and the time to install this customer, the amount of effort it takes to install can really affect your cost per gross ad. And in North America, this is even more true, where your labor costs on, on installing point-to-point -point microwave, and it, you may go from being able to install a customer in a couple hours to taking a few days to do this. So for researching for this market, and although, again, we've been doing this for years and years and years, but it's always good to get it back out on the street and see what's going on. I actually did installs here in Miami uh, with one of the third-party installers for a service provider here locally. And I watched the guys install point-to-point -point microwave and, and red, red line solution, as well as other radio solution. And we really focused on how to make this a quicker install um, and a more efficient way to offer this kind of service. So our, our focus here, going back to our bullets, clean up your tower. Install a multi-point solution for these customers that need less than 100 megabits. Customers that need over 100 megabits or 200 or 300, you might be able to squeak by with our radio and do that, but it really wouldn't be the focus of the product. The RDL 3000, which is the product we're recommending, uh, will give you point-to-point -point microwave replacement for any customer that needs 100 meg, 80 meg, 50 meg, 20 meg. Uh, we can offer 186 megabits per second over a 20 megahertz channel. We're using 256 QAM 7 8 modulation. That's a uh, 90 bits per second per hertz, which is about twice the spectral efficiency of LTE right now. We can also offer 1.8 milliseconds latency, which is about four times quicker than our closest competitor in this market. And we're the only manufacturer that can offer a fully redundant option and 
four nines of availability. It actually took a long time to get to get to that. Um, so this is a this is a really big option for your customer. So from a hardware point of view, what does the system look like? Well, you've got sector controllers, which form a base station, four sectors, six sectors, however many sectors you need, and then you put remotes in each sector. Any of the remotes can also be installed as a point-to-point. -point. So you, if you have an area outside of town where you just have one customer, you can install a quick point-to-point, -point, and then that um, center point can be upgraded to a sector controller at a later date. As far as frequency families, we offer everything, a rainbow of frequencies in the exact same system, the exact same, same radio system. So everything from the white spaces frequencies, which is 470 to 698, and we do have uh, white spaces permission um, in the United States and soon to be Canada, but also the 2 gigahertz, uh, 2.3, the 3 gigahertz, and the unlicensed 49 to 59. And we'll, we've got a new white paper out um, and we will have, be having a new webinar on some of the interfer interference mitigation techniques that we're, work, we're using now and how exciting those are. I've put a bunch of uh, technical stuff in here on the left-hand side for you guys to look at when you get this presentation later on. I'm definitely not going to go through these point by point. Trust me, it is the Ferrari of radios out there. As far as the sector controller, how it installs, you can see from this uh, diagram here, it is super, super clean. When you order our antenna, the antenna comes with the mounts, the cables, everything. So if you, with two part numbers, the radio and the antenna, you get absolutely everything you need except the cable that goes down to your Ethernet switch. And so it's a very clean solution. Um, we also support any channel size. So if you're looking at doing a licensed spectrum rollout and the license holder says, oh, I need special channels, uh, a 3.5 megahertz uh, or, or 0.875 megahertz, something really off the wall, believe it or not, we have it. So we can, we can really use any spectrum. So how would you install this at your point of presence? Really simple. On your tower, you would put multiple sectors. Each sector is going to give you 186 megabits of data capacity. Um, so you could put two sectors or four sectors or six sectors or however many you need. The radio is powered by the PoE Plus port on an Ethernet switch. So if you want to make this a real robust installation, you can put something like an extreme switch with redundant power supplies, or you could use something like a Cisco switch, which I'm showing in this, this diagram here. And then between your uh, base stations, you would connect them with either fiber or microwave. I am going to stop for a minute to see if I have any questions here. I do not. So I will continue. We don't like to show prices on a public webinar, but you guys will be absolutely blown away when you see the new price points of this product. And this is because we understand what the market is for these products, especially when you only have two or three remotes in a sector. So, so what we said for this market is, this is kind of the build it and they will come business case. So if you build a base station and it costs you $100,000, that's a big investment. You want to be able to build out that base station for a very low price, you, you, ideally for below $2,000, and to be able to go from there. And if you can do that, you can make an excellent business case out of pay as you grow. So that's the price model that we did for this. Um, when you buy the radio, it comes with a license automatically included in, in the radio for up to four remotes. When you want to install your, your, your fifth remote, you send Alliance an email, they'll send you a key or you send them a purchase order, they'll send you a key to give you up to 20 remotes. For this market, you're probably never going to have more than 20 remotes on a 186 megabit per second sector, but you could. Um, you could go beyond that up to 120 remotes per sector. and the unit uh, includes the radio, the software license, AES-256 encryption. We also have more advanced encryption, which is additional. Um, the radio comes with a GPS inside of it, so the GPS radio is integrated. And the antenna that we sell also has the uh, GPS antenna integrated with all of the cabling. So if you're looking at synchronizing your base stations, it's already included. It's already paid for from day one. So we designed a better remote. 
<clears throat> for the enterprise. And um, we're not getting rid of our little 8-inch remote enterprise CPE, which, which is a great radio and uh, bread and butter of this market because of its low price point. But we also have a new one, which is called the Enterprise XR for extended range. It's got a 14-inch panel on it. It is an integrated radio, so you get the same waterproof as a frog uh, design, IP67. Um, and it gives you a lot more power. In fact, 300% more power up from uh, 79 milliwatts to 250 milliwatts of uh, power on the antenna for just a little bit of, of extra size. So these are your two options, your CPE or your CPE XR. And what comes in the kit? Everything but the cable. You're going to get the software license and the point-to-point -point software license. So this, that remote can be either used as a remote or as a point-to-point. -point. You're going to get your encryption license. There is an integrated surge suppressor. One of our competitors recently took their surge suppressor out of their radio, um, which I thought interesting. Um, so our search suppressor is included, uh, also the mounting hardware kit, and we'll talk about that in a minute, it's incredible, and the power injector, uh, which is an 802.3 AT standard PoE plus power injector, um, comes right in the kit. We also have an extended antenna. We really don't sell this very often because of the incredible range we have, but if you need to put a parabolic dish on one of our subscriber radios, we do offer you that option. So let's look at the kit. And like I said, when, when I started doing this, um, looking into updating this product, the first thing I did was got out and did some installs. And these were actually photos from some of these installs here in Miami Beach, Florida. And what I learned was that if you're missing just one part in the install kit, you're going to cost this person a lot of money. And the reason why is most of these installs are outsourced. They're outsourced to these companies that do like satellite dishes like uh, Dish TV and all these other types of installs. And basically you just give these installers a box, you give them the location, you, you give them a small training on how it's installed and off they go. If they need to mount your antenna on a wall and they don't have an elbow mount, they've got to go out and get one. Um, and they often don't know until they get there. So, so a lot of times what they'll do, um, especially if they don't have everything in the kit, is they'll go to the location where they're going to do the install and they'll do a site survey and they'll charge for that site survey and then they'll charge for the install. So what we decided to do is redo the install kit, include absolutely everything you need in there to do a, a tiny mast, a small mast, a large mast, a wall mount, or a fascia mount, all in the same kit. So there is no reason that your installer will ever need anything else that's not in this kit. It's all in there, it's all in the box, it's all included. As far as installing, it's by beep tones, um, and they're very loud beep tones. These aren't beep tones you get here. Um, so they're easy to align, and, uh, and once, the, uh, once the unit is, uh, is enclosed and hit, um, it's, uh, it's ready to go. Also, because we're using standard um, power over Ethernet, and I'm seeing that some of our competitors have this now on their roadmap, this is a big deal for customers. If you're using proprietary power over Ethernet because your radio requires 54 watts or, or something crazy like that, um, then you have to use the power brick and then whatever the customer's interface is. With a red line radio, you can use the PoE that's included in the kit, or you can plug it right into the customer's switch. Or you can provide the customer with a VPN appliance, uh, which would be a value-added service that you would be giving to your customer for private network or cloud computing or, or antivirus or all of the other services that telecom service providers like to offer as value-add. The other big change we did um, for this new system is an open standard NMS. So we're using open NMS. Service providers love this. A lot of them are using it already and have integrated all of their devices into OpenNMS. So what is OpenNMS? Well, it's an open standard like Linux or, or any of the other open standard softwares. So um, it's easy to customize. It's extremely stable. You can, you can run it on any server you want from Windows or Linux. It'll manage all of our Redline devices, so, so not only these devices, but also our LTE base stations. It will monitor most any network device. So if you've got Cisco switches or whatever you've got in there, you can, you can monitor them. In fact, 
if you get into the open NMS uh, community, you'll see that all of those already exist, all of the MIBs and everything. So it's really easy to add new devices. And if you need to customize something, it's open standard. You can customize it. Um, as far as the web client, no more installed client. It's available from any browser, even on a mobile browser. So this is, this is a big step forward. We've got the same quality as far as uh, our dashboards, um, KPIs, um, flags with root cause analysis that you would need to do, all the same great NMS that you've come to expect from, from Redline um, in an open, open system. The other thing that we've done for this is a really, really basic CPE provisioning. I don't have time to go into our CRM provisioning, but for those of you that are larger carriers and want to integrate this into your CRM, we can do that. But here's the basic one that most people use. This is called rapid auto provisioning. And basically the way it does it, a basic template is loaded into the device, and this can be done by Alliance, so that when you receive the radios, the basic template is already in there. That means the installer goes out with a radio and it's ready to be installed anywhere in your system with a management um, template, which is basically just a small, maybe 64K bit per second um, um, data bandwidth. So the installer installs the radio and phones it in, just like the guy that comes to install your cable modem or your ADSL, he'll phone in the MAC address to the customer relations management system. They'll look up the, the, the customer uh, address, uh, match it to the MAC address, and then an order will go into the NOC that that MAC address should be pushed one of your services. So you create services based on the services you're offering, and you push to that radio whatever service you want. The good thing about this, it's really simple, it's very inexpensive, and it's completely um, uh, hands-off as far as the installer is concerned. You don't need to train your installer on how to do this kind of stuff. All he does is phone in the MAC address. So now I want to talk about um, our value, our value add into doing this. So you've seen kind of what the product is. Um, the, the big value to this is really incredible data performance. And one of the things that I love about Redline, when I joined Redline, um, some of you know the story of me working at the WiMAX forum in Malaga and looking at all of the different products in WiMAX and the only product that was almost identical from the, the marketing brochure to the actual performance that we were seeing in the WiMAX laboratory was the Redline and that tells you a lot about the ethics of Redline and the way Redline markets and you might say that that's kind of nerdy and we lose a lot of sales but service providers really appreciate that. When we say we give them a certain speed or a certain latency, they can take it to the bank and they can do their business case on it. It's not some pie in the sky number that only works when you've got the wind to your back. So this is, this is the credible data performance that we get is real data performance. And it's things that our customers are seeing. Synchronous uplink and downlink. We're seeing in some of these enterprise business cases Customers actually need more uplink than downlink for the first time in, in data services. And of course, that's because more and more companies are doing all of their applications in the cloud. They've got Microsoft 365, Microsoft Office 365. They've got um, different cloud server uh, for, for their files, file sharing, whether that's uh, SharePoint or it's Dropbox or whatever. And everything is coming from the cloud so that every time they save a document, they're uplinking. Every time they are creating a new PowerPoint presentation, they're uplinking. So they really do need just as much uplink as downlink, and it's very important the product can support that. The other thing is latency. With real-time applications uh, that are in the cloud, any latency means that the end user has a negative experience. The thing looks slow. And this can obviously, at many times, be the fault of the broadband connection. So having extremely low latency is important. And this is another area where our com competitors tend to fudge quite a bit on their latency number. Uh, it's not only important to have latency in the, in the laboratory, it's important to have it in the field. And it's also important to have latency when you have 15 or 20 radios on a base station, not just one or two. The next thing is installs in minutes. Guys, I've done this myself. Trust me. This thing literally installs in minutes. And by the time we got done designing the, the new kit and the new system, I could do an install in literally nine minutes. Uh, we timed it. 
and the, the company that actually helped us do this was, was extremely impressed. And to give you an, an idea, the other broadband, multi-point broadband radios, it was taking them between four and five hours to install them. Um, our CPE has 100% integrated functionality, so we're not leaving anything out of it. Uh, there's no, no stuff to buy later on. And all ancillaries are included, the install kit, uh, the beep tones, everything you need. The provisioning can completely be done automatically if you so wish. And really important, I, I can't emphasize enough about interference mitigation. While you're going to hear a lot about uh, other products in the industry with different types of fancy antenna designs and so forth, and that might be good and that might help you some of the time, but at the end of the day, there's going to be interference. If you're trying to do installs here in Miami or you're in New Jersey where Tom is today or you're in Los Angeles or Chicago, I got news for you. I don't care what kind of antenna you've got. You're going to have interference. You need a system that can, can receive interference, can tell the difference between interference and its home signal. Just like when you're sitting at dinner with your kids, you know the difference between your kid's voice and you can focus on what your child is saying and you can better understand that conversation. And I actually just recently wrote a white paper on this. I encourage you to download or, or ask one of your salespeople for a copy of this white paper on how we work with interference and why we are so strong um, despite interference. And if your, your service provider is licensed, we have all of the licensed frequencies. The hot one right now are the WiMAX frequencies, the 3.3 to 3.8, uh, particularly in Latin America. So. I told you earlier that you really don't need the external antenna, and here's why. Um, here's a range table of our radio performance. Now, this first purple line is the small 8-inch antenna, and you can see that this radio, if it has line of sight, can run at full speed all the way up to just about 2 miles or 3 kilometers, and it can give you a 100 megabit per second connection all the way out to 8 miles or 13 kilometers. If you need more range than that, use the 14-inch integrated. This will give you the same 100 megabits all the way out to 12 miles or 19 kilometers. And I call that our sweet spot because that's the kind of capacity you need. You need to make sure that every single customer is installed with a 100 megabit per second net connectivity. And that will give you the capacity to grow your base station and make this a better service. We're going to come back to this point later when we talk about the business case. How do we get that range? How is it, how is it that everyone else is struggling to make that 256 qualm? Because let's face it, other manufacturers are starting to get into 256 qualm, but the range is, is one kilometer or, or two kilometers, you know, under a mile. How can that line get so much more? Well, a lot of it has to do with the quality radio. Our radios are a bit more expensive and they're incredible quality, but a lot of it also has to do with the MIMO technology. We're not just using MIMO A, or excuse me, MIMO B. Everyone from Wi-Fi to LTE to even proprietary systems seem to be using MIMO B, which will double your speed, and it uses the two radios within the system to double the data going through there. But no one in multipoint, so far anyway, is using both STBC and MRRC, both on uplink and downlink. And that is the MIMO A, and this is what's going to give you better signal. It's going to give you non-line of sight. It's going to help you in interference, and it's going to give you that longer range. It's going to give you that additional 12 dBi gain to your link budget. And what does that mean? That means that you're going to install close to what, what you're trying to install to. So rather than put extra mast height to get that line of sight, you're going to be putting that radio right next to your camera or right next to your, your business area. But it also means you're not going to need these big giant antennas. Sorry, Alliance, you're not going to sell any more six-foot parabolics with a red line. Um, so that extra gain means use a smaller antenna to get that same net gain, and that's what the MIMO A does for you. The other thing that MIMO does is it solves a lot of the wireless challenges, and we've talked about interference, but there are also other problems. If you're in an urban area, you're going to get reflections and scatter. If you're in, in areas where you have a lot of snow or rain, you're going to see inversion. And if you're over swamps or, or like the Gulf of Mexico or anywhere where you have warm water, you're going to get this terrible, terrible thing called ducting that can, it can absolutely kill a link. It can take up to 8 dB off of a link. And having MIMO-A can solve these challenges. We also have a white paper on MIMO 
and the types of mind mill that we use in Redline and why they're so powerful and how that helps your business case. We have an excellent study, case study. This is definitely not for public consumption. This is something we want to sit down and talk to you about. And we want to say, okay, I need to cover a certain number of square kilometers or square miles. I have this many tower locations. That's all I've got. I don't want to put up any more towers. And this is the amount of spectrum I, I want to use or I have. Um, and we can do a whole business case because what everyone seems to be focused on, particularly our competitors, is how much is the radio costing? But at the end of the day, what you're in, if you're a service provider, your investors, the people that are paying you to be a service provider, could care less how much your radio costs. They're going to ask you, what's your revenue per base station? What's your system revenue for your, your whole system? And how much, if you paid for your spectrum, how much revenue are you making per megahertz of spectrum that, that your investors paid for? So these are the important numbers, and, and these are the numbers we need to be talking about. How much money I spent for the megabits per second that I'm able to offer, and how many customers can I put on the limited number of towers and limited number of spectrum that I've got, and that's how you make money in the uh, enterprise telecom business. We'd love to sit down and go through this business case with you and show you how Redline can help save you money. So wrapping it up, what are our differentiators? Extreme coverage per base station. That means more range, but it also means more capacity. So I can get that extra number of miles out there, and I can put that extra number of customers on there. Greater data capacity because we're using 256 QAM 7.8. Well, yeah, but also because that 256 QAM 78 modulation goes all the way out to 9, 10, 12 kilometers, uh, which is many times more than any other system you're going to look at. And what that means, it's better use of your spectrum. If you have paid for your spectrum, this is everything to you. This is extremely important. If you didn't pay for your spectrum, it still should be important because the less spectrum you have to use, the less problems you're going to have with interference. And that means more reliable links. You can offer 99.99 uptime and sub 2 milliseconds latency if you know that your links are stable and you don't have to worry about interference. You can offer real business-to-business -business services with our QoS, our q and &Q. You can do things like um, uh, uh, EVPL, SIP trunking, MPLS extension, all of these business services that would normally be offered with fiber. And finally, it's extremely quick and expensive to install. And that means your cost per additional customer, your cost per gross ad, is very low. So bottom line, higher average revenue per user, or ARPU, higher revenue per base station, higher revenue per megahertz of spectrum, lowest cost per gross ad, and the best business case for this particular segment of the market. So I don't see any questions here so far typed out. Um, Tom, uh, Lisa, have you did, did I miss some questions? No, no, no. Actually, I forwarded them all to you. I don't think we have any more. Does anybody want to submit any questions? Yeah, submit commit questions. We're looking. There's an there's an orange arrow at the top right hand side of your of your uh, uh, window. You click on that, you'll get a chat, and you can type in your chat. Um, in the meantime, uh, I would encourage you to reach out to Alliance or reach out to your, your Redline salesperson. Talk to them about the business case. Sit down and do a business case with Redline and look at the difference in deploying the system um, versus other systems. Um, whether you're deploying currently deploying point multipoint or whether you're deploying microwave, uh, this can be a real business changer for you. I guess you did a very okay. thorough job, Duval. I guess I did. They're either asleep or, or they were, we answered all their questions. Fantastic job, Duval. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we took them all throughout. There were quite a few throughout the presentation. So thank you, everybody, for attending. Thanks again, Duval and Tom, for presenting. Um, oh, there is one that's just come in quickly. I want to find out about the eNode base station. The eNode B. OK. The eNode B is our LTE product. And we have two eNode B products, a high speed and a, or excuse me, a high power and a medium power base station. They are, the focus is industrial and public safety. 
Um, they are focused, uh, they are LTE products, so they are focused on licensed spectrum. Um, there are no um, unlicensed LTE. If someone's telling you there's unlicensed LTE, um, talk to them or talk to me. <laughs> um, so yes, they are focused on LTE spectrum uh, bands. So if you have an LTE spectrum band or your customer has an LTE spectrum and you are looking for a solution, um, whether it be for public safety in the 700 megahertz or a carrier that's looking for an LTE system. These are um, uh, micro base stations, uh, but they are high power micro base stations. We also have the world's only intrinsically safe eNodeB, uh, which means it can be placed in a refinery or a mine or places where uh, base stations normally don't go. And of course, they're, very, they're all very industrial. So these are base stations that can be put in rural areas or in oil fields or places where you just can't get out to maintain them. So you want a real robust system that you can pretty much install and forget. Um, so please, yes, um, if you're interested in our ENOBs, we would uh, we would love to uh, love to talk to you about those. So Deval, there I were a couple more questions I forwarded to you. I'm seeing them now. Um, can it do 10 megahertz channels? Yes, it can do 10 megahertz channels. So the, the speeds that I was referring to are on 20 megahertz channels, but we also support uh, 10 megahertz, 5 megahertz, 2.5 uh, megahertz. We have, uh, and then the uh, um, 7 mega, or 14 megahertz, 7 megahertz, uh, 3.5 megahertz, 1.75 megahertz. So we have tons of different channels. Uh, we can do this and we can do these synchronized or unsynchronized between these. If you choose synchronized, as I said in the presentation, the GPS is all included. It's built into the units underneath the metal, um, so you don't need to spend any extra uh, money. Um, the power of the radios depends on the spectrum. Um, uh, on the 5.8, it's uh, 26 dBm at the antenna port uh, that's combined. Um, is it a transparent bridge to the customer? It can be, uh, but we also do things like Q&Q uh, &Q and um, uh, MPLS extension, so it depends on how complex you want it to be. It will also uh, change its QoS over the air uh, based on your tagging, so if it's plugged into a switch that's doing some specialized tagging, it may change the way the QoS works in that particular sector, which is definitely an advantage. Um, which line of your products replace the ANADI, the RDL3000, this product that we were talking about? It didn't really replace it because it is compatible. Um, the RDL3000 is like a MIMO version of the ANADI with a much bigger engine under the hood and tons of more memory and much improved software. But um, the first ANADI that came out, if memory serves, in 2005, is uh, compatible with the RDL3000. You need to be running um, that same version of software. Uh, but yes, you can still run your ANADI and your RDL3000. Um, interference white paper. So reach out to your salesman on interference uh, and uh, read our, our new white paper. We'll also be doing a coffee break. A coffee break is a 15-minute uh, uh, presentation uh, on interference. Uh, I believe that will be the end of August. Um, can the eNode B solution be targeted towards residential use? So the eNode B is an LTE base station and definitely um, you'll be connecting LTE uh, user equipment or UEs and that could be a Samsung telephone or an iPhone or an iPad or it could be an industrialized uh, LTE device or fixed LTE, so yes, uh, it is LTE, which is a last mile solution, fixed and mobile. Um, our eNode B base station is focused on industrial. So we're focused on um, cities that are deploying public safety and are telling us, I've got a budget for this, but I don't know what my budget is going to be next year, so I want something I can install and forget. I don't want, I don't have, I'm not uh, AT&T or Verizon or Sprint, I don't know what my budget is going to be to support this and I definitely don't have men running around in repair vans uh, going out repairing uh, eNode B's every time they break down. So these are units um, that have absolute reliability, 
they, they support much lower temperature, much higher temperature, much more um, aggressive weather, um, both rain and snow and, and other types of weather issues. And we also have, have a model that is intrinsically safe for industrial use. So anyone from an oil field to a mining company to a manufacturing company to um, the city of wherever uh, might be interested in installing our E node Bs. But these are, again, these are licensed frequency solutions. So this is, an, this is a real LTE deployment. Um, do you have a plan for 40 megahertz channel on the RDL 3000? Toby, we do. We have a point-to-point -point radio which we'll be releasing uh, shortly, uh, which will be called the 3100, and that will have a 40 megahertz channel. We did a lot of exploration with 40 megahertz in point multipoint and really found the interference uh, in unlicensed way too tenuous to be acceptable. Um, and in 99% of the cases, uh, the radios just automatically drop down to 20 megahertz or 10 megahertz anyway. Um, so that radio will be focused on point to point, um, and we'll continue to focus on 20 megahertz or, or less uh, for multipoint. Um, could radio be applicable for transport of NVR security video data from one building to another? Henry, that is one of our big uh, applications, uh, which are video systems for public safety. Um, in fact, to give you an idea of how cost effective our system is, there were um, 48 public tenders in the last couple of years in Mexico, different cities of Mexico, for uh, video surveillance systems, high, high resolution video surveillance systems, and a wireless multipoint product to back all these. These were public tenders, anyone could apply, and obviously they were received based on uh, a lot of factors, but price probably be, if not the biggest, one of the biggest. And we we won uh, 43 of those 48 public tenders. Um, so yes, our product is extremely well suited for video surveillance. Again, because of the range, because of the capacity, you don't have to install as many base stations. Uh, you don't need as good line of sight, so you don't have to install masks at every camera. You just mount the radio right next to the camera. Um, that is a, definitely a, another webinar, but trust me, there are a lot of advantages to that. If you can, Henry, if you can reach out either to me or to your, your Redline salesperson um, or uh, Alliance, uh, and we can set up some FaceTime to talk about this, I would, uh, I would really like that. And I think that's our last question. Okay, thank you, Deval, and thank you everyone for attending. As a reminder, I have recorded this webinar and I will send out a link after, um, as well as a copy of the presentation. So uh, if, if you have any questions that you think of later, just uh, reply to my email and we'll help you get them answered. Thanks again and have a great day. <laughs>